Good evening, everyone. I, Dr. Priya Varni, on behalf of IPSM eConnect, would like to welcome you all to PG lecture series on role of community med physicians in implementing maternal health strategies to improve maternal health outcomes on eConnect platform. Maternal health, it is of paramount importance as it directly impacts the well-being of both mother and the child. With her healthy mothers, more likely to give birth to healthy infants. Access to quality maternal health care services not only reduces the risk of maternal mortality, but also contributes to the overall development and welfare of societies by ensuring the health and productivity of future generations. To lead us through this, we have with us Dr. Madhu Gupta, Madam, Professor, mm -hmm. Department of Community Medicine and School of Public Health, PGIMER, Chandigarh, Madam has 24 years of experience in reproductive maternal and child adolescent health, vaccinology, health inequalities, and digital health. We welcome you, Madam, on behalf of IPS and eConnect. Thank and you. Without, Thank you, Dr. Priya. And without wasting any more time, over to you, Madam. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, IAPSN, uh, especially this eConnect platform. Uh, for connecting me with the uh, with the future of uh, 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 future of our residents and our uh, speciality who are going to take uh, uh, this agenda forward so uh, i think it's a, it's a very important topic which uh, iapsm have chosen and uh, uh, what i'll be covering first of all uh, what is there in the maternal health strategies and what role we can play as a community physician I have a special interest in this field. I'm working in this field for the last 20 years. So uh, I'll start with the, uh, briefly about the background of RCH program in India, the evolution of RCH program, and currently uh, the RMNCHA, what are the goals, objectives, and the newer initiatives which has been taken by the government in this, and then finally the role of community physicians. So coming to RCH in India, so women of reproductive age group, as you know, and under five children, they constitute about 60% uh, of total India's population. That is why uh, the major health budget is focused on reproductive and child health uh, still now, although NCD has taken up, but uh, uh, we, are, uh, have, we have not achieved the sustainable development goals ready to uh, reproductive and child health. That is why we need to still focus on RCH. So, and why uh, the need? Because this is preventable morbidity and mortality. 75 to 80% of these deaths are preventable. And this is a direct indicator of country's health and socioeconomic status. And uh, it requires life cycle approach and continuum of care that I'll be describing. And uh, the implementation has to be there at all levels of healthcare delivery system, starting from the village to, to the central uh, level. So uh, if you look at the status, uh, the maternal health, the most important indicator to know the status of maternal health is maternal mortality ratio, which is an impact indicator. And uh, as per SDGs, our goal is to reduce it to 70. If you look at the figure on the left side, which shows the trend of maternal mortality ratio in India over the past 15 years, uh, from 2005 to uh, the latest 2018-20, which is the sample registration system data. So there is a remarkable decline since 2005 after the implementation of National Health uh, Mission, uh, which was earlier National Health Mission, from 254 to 97, which is the current status per lakh live birth in India. So uh, we have we have definitely reduced with the with the very effective strategies for. Uh, reducing the maternal mortality, but this is the last mile where we have to reach to less than 70, which is very difficult. And uh, herein, the different strategies will be required actually to reduce this, uh, uh, these deaths to achieve the target. And if you look at the, the causes of maternal deaths, the causes haven't been changed over these years and still the hemorrhage, especially the postpartum hemorrhage remains the most common cause of maternal, maternal death. And uh, then pregnancy-related uh, infections, about 12%. Hypertensive disorders, about 6%. Abortions, about 5%. And other direct causes, about 20%, which includes obstructed labor or uh, other uh, indications. 
and uh, indirect causes which is like medical causes like like flu uh, covid 19 hiv these contributes to uh, tuberculosis cardiac diseases about 9.7% uh, deaths and uh, uh, as you can see this these deaths can be prevented so this is the uh, slide showing the targets so for maternal mortality ratio uh, the, as i've already mentioned the target is to reduce it to less than 70 uh, the this is uh, the targets to be achieved uh, to be achieved by 2017 as per the national health policy uh, 2017 to be achieved by 2020 100 uh, so this we have achieved but we have to go till 70 since mother uh, mother health is also related to to the child health the infant mortality rate has to be reduced from 28 uh, from the current to less than 20 neonatal mortality rate from 22 to less than 12 and under 5 mortality rate from 35 to less than 25 per 1000 live births so all these are related but in today's session i'll be focusing on maternal health if you improve the maternal health there are very high chances that the child the child of that lady will survive so briefly about the evolution of the rch program so india was the first country to start with the national family planning program in 1951 and uh, then there was target oriented approach where there was introduction of lipis loop iucds and condoms then an mtp act came into uh, being in 1971 and we had all india postpartum program in 1969 to 74 in 74 to 79 we had some bad experiences with the the family planning program because of the masterization campaigns and the family pro, uh, planning program was renamed to family welfare program uh, from 1982 to 85 there were more focus on mcs services and 85 was the landmark year when the universal immunization program and adult disease control program vertical programs were initiated it was in 1992 that uh, uh there was uh, uh, these were integrated the mch programs into child survival and safe motherhood program because it was realized that uh, family planning cannot be considered as in isolation uh but i think the remarkable change change came in 1994 after the international conference of population and development which was held in cairo uh before that the the, the focus was on targeted approach and uh, this led to the paradigm shift in the way program were implemented and this led to the uh, introduction of target free approach and uh, then the targets were were not actually uh, passed on from central to the to the state but uh, it was vice versa it was a bottom up approach and the village action plans were made were developed and uh, uh, likewise the program was implemented in 1997 the first rch program came into being then in 2000 we had national population policy in 2003 we uh, the rch1 became rch2 program with their focus on rti st and adolescent health component also in 2005 as uh, we all know nrhm uh, national rural health mission was launched and under that uh, many programs came under this umbrella including the rch2 which provided a lot of flexibility to the way program is to be implemented and a lot of budget is being committed for rch program and uh, its communitization component of nhm and the system strengthening component of nhm actually improved the health infrastructure of uh, uh, providing maternal health services especially delivery points labor rooms mch wings which which became part of nhm so in 2013 nrhm became nhm after incorporating the urban health mission and uh, RCH uh, became RMN CHA with reproductive maternal newborn child health plus adolescent component so uh, the reproductive health approach is defined as a state of complete physical mental and social well being and not merely an absence of disease or infirmity in all matters relating to reproductive system and its functions and processes and uh, as i've already mentioned reproductive health approach was adopted in icpd cairo 1994 wherein people have the ability to reproduce and regulate their fertility women are able to go through their pregnancy and childbirth safely outcome of pregnancy is successful in terms of well being and survival of mother and infant and couples are able to have sexual relations free of fear of pregnancy and contracting diseases so uh, then 
this is the current program which we have since 2013 RMNCHA uh, with the reproductive health, maternal health, newborn child health and adolescent health component. So goals and strategies. Uh, the premise uh, uh, and approach of RMNCHA is that uh, maternal and child health cannot be improved in isolation. And adolescent health and family planning, these are integral to the outcomes. And approach was comprehensive life cycle approach targeting all ages and stages and continuum of care throughout the, throughout the life as well as throughout the healthcare delivery systems. So this is the premise and approach, first of all, across life stages from uh, newborn period to childhood to adolescent, reproductive age, then pregnancy. And across a uh, continuum of uh, uh, care, across various levels of care from uh, family or home and community care to outreach services to health facilities, which could be primary health centers, post referral units, district hospitals, as well as back referrals. So the, the care has to be ensured at all levels of healthcare delivery system, as well as in all the age groups, in all the age, age groups. This is the famous five by five matrix, uh, wherein in each of the five components, there are five specific strategies, which has to be implemented. That is why it is known as five by five matrix. And uh, uh, this is this alone will not suffice. The health system has to be strengthened along with, uh, for example, caseload-based deployment of health re human resources at all levels, uh, availability of ambulances, drugs, diagnostics, reproductive health commodities, behavior change communication in the field, supportive supervision of the services, and uh, having a public uh, grievance, grievance redressal system. And these are some of the cross-cutting areas, which is uh, uh, for all the strategies, like uh, availability of nurses, addressing the social determinants of health, introducing difficult area and performance-based incentives, focus on unserved and underserved villages, urban slums and blocks, and bringing down out-of-pocket expenses. So I'll be going into these strategies one by one. So briefly, but I'll, I may, my main focus will be on maternal health. But maternal health as such cannot be done, uh, cannot meet its uh, objectives or goals unless it is uh, integrated into RMNCHA framework. So reproductive health focus on spacing methods, particularly postpartum intrauterine contraceptive devices at high, cost, uh, high case load facilities. Sorry. Uh, focus on interval IUCD at all facilities, including sub-centers on fixed days, then uh, home delivery of contraceptives and ensuring spacing at birth through ASHAs, ensuring access to pregnancy testing kits, which is NISHE kits, and strengthening comprehensive abortion care services and maintaining quality sterilization services. Under uh, maternal health, the, the five strategies uh, under RMNCHA are use of mother-child tracking system, which is now known as RCH portal, to ensure early registration of pregnancy, full ANC, and also follow up their children after birth. Detecting high-risk pregnancies and line list, including severely anemic mothers and ensure proper uh, appropriate management. Equip delivery points with highly trained HR and ensure equitable access to EMOC services through FRUs. Also add MCH wings, maternal and child health wings as per the need. Review of maternal, infant and child deaths for corrective actions. I'll be uh, going in detail in each of these uh, strategies. Uh, identify villages with low institution delivery and distribute uh, misoprostol to select women during pregnancy only if you suspect home delivery. And incentivize ANNs for domiciliary deliveries if the woman is not able to come, but we are focusing on institution deliveries. Then for newborn and child health, uh, for newborn, early initiation and exclusive breastfeeding, home-based newborn care through ASHA, essential newborn care and resuscitation services at all delivery points, special newborn care units with highly trained human resource and other infrastructure, uh, community level use of gentamicin by ANM to prevent neonatal sepsis, uh, under child health, complementary feeding, iron folic acid supplementation, and focus on nutrition, 
diarrhea management at community level using ors and zinc management of pneumonia because these are the major killers diarrhea and pneumonia full immunization coverage and implementation of rashtriya bal swasthya karyakram under adolescent health address teenage pregnancy and increase contraceptive prevalence in adolescents uh, introduce community based services through peer educators strengthen the urge clinics uh, roll out national iron plus initiative including bcif supplementation and promote menstrual hygiene and now we have rks ke rashtriya kishor swasthya karyakram so and also availability of minimum essential commodities under each component so regarding maternal health there has to be injection oxytocin to prevent uh, postpartum hemorrhage tablet misoprostol also for in case of home delivery injection magnesium sulfate is this is the essential commodity to prevent uh, eclampsia death due to eclampsia tablet mifepristone only at facilities conducting safe abortion services and also there are cross cutting commodities like iron folic acids and other uh, uh, tablets and medicines now coming to the key strategies and interventions so look at the maternal health strategies so strategies aiming at all women and strategies targeted towards subsets of women first of all look at the strategies which aim at all women among these uh, uh, like among these 15 to 49 years there are women who are pregnant or intrapartum or postpartum women among the pregnant or postpartum women the the services has to be ensured at the facility or outreach services and at the home level at the home level community health workers need to visit the homes and if there is a delivery then it has to be performed by the skill attendant that needs to be ensured if she is pregnant uh, uh, then also uh, her antenatal in the facility and outreach services she has to be covered during her uh, during her antenatal visits you have to ensure minimum uh, four antenatal checkups uh, track the anemia high risk pregnancy like gestational diabetes hypertension thyroid disorders and she has to be given iron folic acid and calcium supplementation to prevent hypertensive disorders deworming and malaria detection and also postnatal checkups by the uh, by the health workers through home based postnatal checkup scheme uh in the in intrapartum period because most of the deaths are during this period intrapartum so it has to be in the facility uh, delivery in the healthcare facilities and basic emergency obstetric care has to be provided to all the delivering women in the facility with an access to comprehensive uh, emergency obstetric care if there is a need and uh, in the home although this is uh, not preferred but there has to be if at all then there has to be a skilled birth attendant for all other women their nutrition violence against women education empowerment prevention of treatment of diseases early detections that has to be taken care of coming to strategies targeted towards subsets of women like pregnant women intrapartum postpartum women with complications so they need to be identified uh, during the antenatal period it's a long period 9 months period so antenatal care has to be of very good quality to identify the high risk women and they need to be referred to the facilities at the earliest and they should be uh, provided with emergency obstetric care depending upon the need basic or comprehensive emergency care the basic difference between uh, basic and comprehensive emergency care that comprehensive emergency care include availability of anesthetist uh, ot and blood bank blood storage so in case a uh, uh, cesarean is required then that uh, facility should should be able to provide comprehensive emergency obstetric care so state generally designate that which services is providing basic emergency obstetric care normal deliveries and which services are are acting as frus all the frus should have a backup of ot and blood bank to prevent uh, maternal mortality and the referral distance from the psc to the fru should not be more than 1 hour that that should be uh, the strategy in the state so another category uh, women not wanting to have children that means the reproductive health services if they are pregnant and it's a unwanted pregnancy they should have an access to safe abortion because mortality due to uh, unsafe abortion is about uh, 5% of all deaths and uh, for non pregnant then all other family planning methods to be offered to her so briefly about antenatal care uh, 
which is uh, delivered through outpatient or outreach services, early registration before 12 weeks of pregnancy, minimum four quality ANC checkups should be there and at least one ANC by the medical officer, preferably in the third trimester. Uh, that is the th uh, third 28 to 34 weeks. This is the time when still we have a chance to detect high-risk pregnancy and uh, manage this. So first within 12 weeks, second between 14 to 26 weeks, third between 28 to 34 weeks, and fourth between 36 weeks and term. So to, uh, it has to be ensured the quality means the two doses of injection tetanus toxoid, uh, tetanus diphtheria nowadays, and boost or booster dose if the gap between two pregnancies is less than three years. All pregnant women should get 180 uh, tablets of iron folic acid as a prophylactic drug. And if there is anemia, then double the dose. And 360 tablets of calcium. Screening of treatment of disorders for high-risk pregnancy. This is very, very important. Anemia, gestational diabetes, thyroid, malaria, pregnancy-induced hypertension, worm infestation, hepatitis B and C, RH incompatibility, HIV. So these are routine investigations. This is under the national program. The screening has to be done. Then accordingly, provision of preventive interventions and counseling on various aspects, especially uh, emergency preparedness and birth preparedness, where she wants to get herself delivered. That should be prepared during her antenatal period. So internal period has to be institutional, uh, skilled attendance for normal childbirth and monitoring of the labor uh, by use of photograph. There is a lot of innovation in photograph and now we have Prasa Watch also, digital uh, monitoring of uh, it is if it is being used. So emergency of tactical, basic and comprehensive for complicated cases and effective referral system is required. Postnatal care, uh, the, in case of normal delivery, she has to be institutionalized for at least 48 hours. And thereafter, she needs to be followed up in the community for 42 days period. And focus should be on early initiation of breastfeeding, prevention and detection of complications, information and counseling on self-care at home, nutrition, family welfare, and fam uh, breastfeeding. And these are uh, the seven visits. Zero is generally within the hospital as most of our deliveries are in the institute nowadays. After that on 3rd, 7, 14, 21st, 28 and 42 days of delivery. And uh, these all should be monitored, bleeding, fever, sepsis, pain in leg, headache, disorientation, unconsciousness. These are the early danger signs. Uh, if the mother is having, then she needs to be uh, referred to the, to, the, to the health facility for managing management and also it's a unit it's a postnatal checkup the newborns also need to be uh, simultaneously uh, monitored and they need to be examined for developing any complications to prevent neonatal mortality some of the very cost effective and uh, evidence based strategies to prevent hemorrhage and primary and above level is the active management of third stage of labor uh, wherein uh, injection methogen is given Detect and oxytocin uh, is given and detect uh, and treat anemia at the uh, during the antenatal period. Uh, skill birth attendant for delivery so that uh, they they uh, they recognize the danger sign at the early stage and uh, if need be refer or uh, call the consultant the senior level consultant and to administer IV fluids and oxytocin timely. So this is, I think, the most important uh, uh, problem and there are cost-effective interventions available. Now we have uh, evidence against the effectiveness of various interventions. The challenge now is only in the implementation of various in interventions. That is where the role of community physicians comes into play. Unsafe abortion primary and above level health facility, counseling and family planning services. Uh, they should know that it is legal that uh, uh, even now up to 24 weeks, this, uh, this abortion is uh, legal under the revised MTP Act and medical abortion till 12 weeks of pregnancy. And after that, uh, up, to, up to 20 weeks, one uh, uh, practitioner can uh, uh, can indicate for MTP and after 20 weeks, two practitioners uh, are required uh, to prescribe. Then secondary and above level access to MTP services and administer of fluids and antibiotics. For infection, this is also primary and above level, stillbirth attendant, 
uh, delivery by the skilled birth attendant five prints to be followed and disposable delivery kits has to be there for obstructed labor use of photograph so that it is uh, uh, identified at the early stage and cesarean can be done so cesarean can reduce the, the chances of obstructed labor hypertensive disorders uh, this is also early detection during the antenatal period this can be found and uh, uh, if it is not controlled after medications, then magnesium sulfate is one drug, which is a wonder drug, and prevent uh, uh, prevent the uh, death due to eclampsia. So magnesium sulfate has to be there as an essential essential commodity. So coming to the schemes, which we should know. So we know that Janni Suraksha Yojana is there, which is hundred percent centrally funded scheme. To uh, this is cash incentive to promote institution debris. And these are various, uh, depending upon the state and area. This is uh, the, the incentives to the mother, to the ASHA. So cover specialist services in facility at least 1500 per case. So this has remarkably increased the insulin delivery from 47% to 88.6%. Safe deliveries from 50.7% to 81.4% and beneficiaries have increased tremendously. So this is this has been very successful scheme in increasing the institution delivery, but uh, there are there are certain deaths which which we have just uh, uh, shifted the place from home to the health facilities that should be avoided. So this also uh, uh, most of you are aware, Jani Shishu Suraksha Karyakram, where entitlement of pregnant women uh, is almost uh, uh, free for all the antenatal services, all the intrapartum services and postnatal care services, and also for her newborn and in some states for her infant. So there is free and zero expense delivery and cesarean section, free drugs and consumables, free diagnostics, free diet, free provision of blood, free transport from home to health institutions and back also. So that is also very, very important, very, very good initiative and exemption from all kinds of user charges. And similarly for her newborn. Then we have this Pradhan Mantri Surakshit Matratva Abhiyan to actually uh, cover all those women in the vulnerable areas where they are not able to get access to the diagnostics. So uh, and special day is uh, held, uh, special day is kept like 9th of every month wherein all the services are given in the PHC, CHC and district hospitals. The doctors go to those levels and they provide package of in investigation and also provide second trimester ultrasonography so that so as to ensure that every woman is being screened for high risk pregnancy and ensure drugs, IFP and calcium supplements. And accordingly, their mother child protection card is uh, provided a sticker. Green means no risk factor identified and red means high risk pregnancy, which needs to be followed up in the routine uh, antenatal care checkup. Then Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana, this is also under Women and Child Development uh, uh, Ministry. So wherein the, there is a cash transfer of up to 5,000, up to first installment is 1,000, registration of pregnancy within 150 days of LMPs, second uh, of 2,000 at least with one ANC, and 2,000 is the third installment at childbirth registration and first cycle of immunization. So this is a direct transfer, transfer and uh, it goes into the account of the woman. So uh, given for first living child and prevents economic and social distress, encourage excess of breastfeeding and the focal point is Anganwadi centers, but ANMs do help. Then we have a very good initiative, which is labor room quality improvement initiative to improve the quality of care during labor and delivery to improve the intrapartum care because most of the deaths occur during this period. And also there, uh, the focus is on respectful maternity care wherein one uh, birth attendant from her, of her choice can accompany her into the labor room and she has to be treated with dignity, with respect, no physical abuse, no verbal abuse, no abandonment has to be done. And uh, uh, there is a national quality assessment for that and training and mentoring and all the delivery points, they need to be certified under Lakshya. There's a lot of competition and the quality has improved significantly even in the remotest PHCs after the Lakshya implementation. So strategies, reorganizing labor room and operation theaters, there's a checklist. It's easy to implement and easy to uh, easy to be done and improve simultaneously. There are dedicated obstetric HDUs, high dependency units and uh, ICUs at secondary level and above. 
and regular maternal death surveillance response for uh, for any death which occurs c section audits referral audits collating and replicating best practices from other states so the states they are learning from each other there is a whatsapp group wherein uh, the all the pscs they report that this this uh, month we are certified and there is a time interval it's not that once you are certified that uh, uh, it, there's a time period of about one or two years when you have to take when you have to apply for the certification again so then dakshita scheme is actually a very good scheme where whosoever is posted in the labor room their skills are being uh, uh, augmented they are being uh, made skilled to improve the quality of maternal and newborn care during the intra and immediate immediate postpartum care because it was realized that this is the most crucial period and if we do not have a very skilled manpower during this period then we may lose the mother or the baby so this is a very good uh, uh, implementation strategies to improve the quality of care during infantal period so then we have surakshit matrutva ash uh, ashwasan suman which aims at zero preventable maternal and newborn deaths basically ensures everything whatever the schemes it ensures dignified respect, respectful delivery of quality healthcare provide a positive birthing experience zero tolerance of denial of services integration of existing schemes and initiatives grievance redressal and client feedback and awards to champions so this is basically whatever i have told you during antenatal period uh during the uh, internal period and post natal period this comes under suman and but there is zero tolerance to the denial of services to the pregnant women then uh, comprehensive abortion care services this was much needed uh, the guidelines came in this year only april 2023 uh, to prevent uh, uh deaths due to unsafe abortions or morbidity due to unsafe abortions so here in medical abortion can be done up to 9 weeks uh medical vacuum aspiration up to 12 weeks and surgical uh, abortion up to 24 weeks of gestation so this is also very very good uh, strategy and but uh, in the guidelines it is being covered what an asha needs to be counseled at the grassroots level what an ann needs to counsel at the uh community level and what is the role of the doctor at the psc so that has been covered under this comprehensive abortion care then we have this uh, uh mcb card all of you must have seen but uh, this is also uh, an very important uh, information education material to the mother so which includes like safe motherhood and antenatal care newborn care growth and development nutrition and immunization it has to be used by mothers to know to track their status uh, throughout the pregnancy and through their child family members mahila mandals ans and healthcare providers and the card retained by the mother she can go at home and she can read it uh, at her ease and but the counter file retained by the healthcare provider also to keep a track of the status and another is the safe motherhood uh, booklet so this is available in different languages uh to to increase the awareness of mothers regarding the uh, mother and child health services maternal infrastructure has improved tremendously so delivery points are identified uh with the minimum benchmark of performance in order to prioritize and direct resources in a focused manner to these facilities and these are all strengthened with trained and skilled human resources infrastructure equipment drugs and supplies referral transport in the form of ambulances free ambulances for providing quality and comprehensive rmncha check here secondly obstetric uh, high dependency units and icus which are linked with the uh, with the labor room or the ots so that the woman need not uh, rush from uh, the medical icu to here and there and uh, mch wing so state of the art mch maternal and child health wings have been uh, sanctioned at district hospitals uh, district women hospitals and other high uh, caseload facilities at sub district level as integrated facilities for providing quality obstetric and neonatal care so this has uh, relatively changed the scenario within the state because the exist existing district hospitals have these uh, mch wings and uh, most of these holistic hospitals are now upgraded to medical colleges with these mch wings so that has increased the manpower in terms of availability of number of specialists so the women need not re be referred from a remote district uh, hospital to a state level hospital 
So that is the advantage. She can get the uh, emergency and uh, comprehensive emergency of care at a, at, a, at a hospital which is very close to her place. Uh, as you, you can see that uh, when there is a complication due to postpartum hemorrhage, she only has three to four hours. So that's a very crucial time to save her. And if she gets all these facilities very close during that time, then we are able to save her life. Then uh, there is also maternal management information system in the form of this NCT card where uh, all the records uh, are there during antenatal, postnatal, and the uh, postnatal period. Then mother and child tracking system, which was uh, the older system to monitor ANC checkers of pregnant women, monitor institutional disease and PNC, and tracking of children for regular immunization, information of paper being converted to digital format. So like e Mamta in Gujarat, this is now upgraded to RCH portal where all the women who gets who is married as in the reproductive age group is eligible uh, couple. Basically, they are uh, we start from the time when they are eligible couple. Like any partner, any couple where the age of the wife is between 15 to 49 years. So before the first pregnancy. So uh, the ANMs are registering them at that time and then they are following them till they have a child of up to five years. So this is augmented version of MCTS, captures information on all RCS related services. This is a very good tool for monitoring and also for monitoring the high risk pregnancy, their status, especially anemia. What happens to HB level at first uh, visit before uh, uh, in the first semester? Then what happens to HB in the second semester in all the uh, essential four entrance visits? So WHO says there has to be eight visits. So uh, in urban setting, this is common. This is uh, this is doable. This is achievable. But in rural setting, this is still there is still a challenge. So helps in generation of work plan for immunization services. Then another important uh, tracking uh, uh, the information system is maternal death surveillance and response. What we do not see through the routine implementation of strategies can be known through audit of a maternal death. If you go for quality check, you will see that everything is in place. So, uh, but when you when when there is a death in that host that facility, you will realize that what was missing. So um, this is very, very important tool to, to strengthen health systems, to strengthen human resources, to strengthen the existing clinical protocols. So this is very, very important. And uh, it includes the community-based maternal death uh, surveillance and response verbal autopsy of all maternal deaths, whether the death has occurred in the facility or community, the community-based uh, review has to be done. Then facility-based review, which is to be done by the physician, by the um, specialist who uh, in the health facility within 24 hours of the death, they have to report and they have to fill the uh, form and submit it to the uh, RCHO, Reproductive Child Health Program Officer. Then uh, state conducts confidential inquiries into maternal death. They can choose certain deaths and they conduct confidential inquiries. Then surveys of severe morbidity or near miss death because earlier the death is a very um, it's a it's a negative feeling that okay we could not save it can it can be demotivating but now we have a, a review of near miss deaths the the woman was about to die and the woman saved it what were the strategies the team actually uh, team implemented to save that that uh, death of that woman. So near miss deaths are also now part of the MDSR uh, so that we learn more that how, what, what positive uh, strategies should be implemented or should be strengthened to save the death of the uh, pregnant woman. And clinical audit for protocols, like for example, I've said in one of the uh, observation in one of the district that uh, we visited uh, for review that magnesium sulfate was not given to somebody who had PIH and she had conversion and the woman died. So this is a very, very known effective intervention available, but still it is it was not being followed. So maybe the new resident, the new nurse who have joined, the one whoever was posted there, she was not aware and it was missed. So clinical audits are also very, very important to save the uh, death of women. Now, although 
uh, I myself is a community physician and I have been involved in uh, improving the health system in providing antenatal care, in internal care, as well as postnatal care. So we have a big role to play as a community physician. Either we work alone in our uh, health system or we work with the, with the state governments or the central governments to strengthen, to monitor, to supervise the existing health strategies. So we have a big role to play in improving the, the way maternal health strategies are being implemented. So first role is uh, what I feel is the clinical role and responsibilities. We are physicians working in the community setting. So whenever there is a pregnant antenatal uh, day, uh, the physician, the community the resident should sit in the antenatal clinic and uh, they should provide antenatal care uh, so that uh, they ensure that AM does not miss out any important investigation, which is part of the program. So regular assessment, and they also see that how the AM is constant and they can themselves examine the woman. So uh, regular assessments, clinical assessments, guidance on nutrition, lifestyle, and most important is uh, identification of high-risk pregnancies. They have to ensure immunization uh, of the mother timely for tetanus diphtheria, although it's uh, the a &M who does it, but they can see that uh, whether she has received her two doses or booster dose as per uh, the spacing. And also the children whom uh, she uh, she has brought to the to the health facility. Then, uh, if they are posted in the labor room, then ensuring the basic emergency of the care during labor and delivery, and stabilization of the care and stabilization of the newborn. And if they find any high risk pregnancy, then referral and coordination with the high level health facilities in cases of complication. It is very, very important that residents make contact with the refuge facility. They speak with the medical officer there or a specialist there that this is the patient with these, these complications and they need this treatment. So that patient gets the proper treatment and whomsoever they are referring, they're also aware of this situation. So they can refer it to their medical colleges or to other uh, nearby uh, first referral units for management. So this is these are clinical responsibilities. Since we are we work very closely with the grassroots level workers, uh, ASHAs, ANMs. So we need to advocate and mobilize the community for availing the maternal health services. And uh, there are uh, certain social uh, beliefs, social uh, factors which are prevalent in the in the community, which we come to know from uh, maternal health maternal death surveillance. Like for example, in one of the case where we were reviewing the maternal death in the community, we, we came to know that the, in spite the doctor had advised them that uh, this is a case of PIH and the child was, uh, uh, the pregnancy was contributing to, the, uh, to this hypertension. And they had advised that mother should get the delivery done after completion of 37 weeks. Uh, they did not get the delivery done at that uh, time because uh, they thought that uh, this is too premature for the child to come out at this stage. As a result, both uh, the family lost both mother and the baby. So those uh, uh, lessons learned from the community death review has to be uh, communicated to the, to the community so that they learn from these and they change their behaviors. Uh, secondly, rollout of new schemes and initiatives through community health workers. When a doctor speaks about some scheme, it makes a difference. So they have to, uh, they have to organize in the community uh, session with the with the community so that uh, involving community leaders, panchayat, uh, PRIs, so that whatever is being implemented new, the community is made aware to increase the utilization of those services. And also they are the liaison point with the, with the community as well as with the uh, health program officers at block, district, state, and central levels. They need not be working in isolation. So whatever uh, whatever uh, the, the problems they are facing in implementing uh, uh, the program, in, in providing the services at the, at the uh, community level, they should accordingly communicate with the, with the with the program level uh, functionary so that the program is being implemented uh, effectively. 
then I think community physicians have a very big role in monitoring and supervision of various maternal health strategies. Uh, for example, like monthly review of data for tracking indicators for uh, MDSR reports and looking at what are the trends over time of these. Is there uh, a registration which is happening or there's a delay in a registration? What is the status of institution delivery? Was there any death, uh, maternal death in the community? What were the, if there's a maternal death, what were the reasons, what were the delays found in that so that uh, they can they can take an action accordingly. Then uh, quality assurance and monitoring for service delivery points as per Lakshay for improvement and upscaling and supportive supervision of the healthcare providers at the grassroots level. Suppose there's a new a &M who has come up and uh, she has learned the property, but you can always supervise that how she is inserting the property. And if she's being given training to uh, to perform a new natal checkup in the community, you should go and uh, see supervise her uh, whether she is uh, doing it correctly or she is missing out any sign. So uh, supportive supervision is also a very important role of community physicians. Then, of course, uh, capacity building for ANMs, ASHAs, Anganwadi workers, uh, medical and paramedical staff for maternal health strategies medical education and conducting workshops and training sessions on new programs and schemes, capacity building on maternal health strategies. So uh, making the community aware, knowledge dissemination, because they're the first point of contact for creating awareness, health education and promotion to individuals and families, spreading awareness, especially birth preparedness and complication readiness, child rearing and nutrition, and counseling on breastfeeding, immunization and family planning. And as a community physician, also, it is our responsibility to generate uh, good evidence on implementing maternal health strategies, so uh, especially to improve maternal health outcomes. So there are various strategies you can uh, you can uh, evaluate, uh, so you can conduct implementation research to improve the implementation of maternal health strategies. And not only research, bearing you're also advising that what needs to be done differently to improve the implementation and also effectiveness studies of existing maternal health strategies that can be planned for by the community physicians. So I'll be briefly sharing uh, my experience in PGI. So in PGI, we have about uh, uh, 11 health posts with a population of 237 in Punjab, in Chandigarh, which is an urban area in Haryana. So Punjab and Haryana, we are, uh, these are rural and Chandigarh, is an urban health uh, area. And we have different models of implementing the community health service program. So uh, most of our centers, they work in uh, collaboration mode with the state governments. So in Fatehgarh Sahib, it's the civil hospital where there's an NCT cleaning, which we are running. Uh, in Narayangar, this is a residential area where our residents stay there and uh, they work in a civil hospital, sub-district hospital and provide their residents from other department also, and they, they strengthen the services here. Uh, the in charge is the community medicine department. So in Raipurani area, there's a village which we have adopted and uh, uh, we provide community health services there. So this is uh, under an MOU with the Haryana government. In Chandigarh, uh, so uh, the MOU is like that. There's a tripartite MOU. So the MOU is with the PGI, with the municipal corporation and with the Chandigarh administration. So uh, in most of these centers, the building and the staff is by the municipal corporation. Uh, the supplies are coming from the Chandigarh administration from the, uh, from the program level. And uh, we as PGI, we are administrator and we are providing the doctors. So that is how we are uh, working different models. So this is one paper, which is uh, monitoring and evaluation of RMNCHA program in one of the health centers, effectiveness of a collaborative model in improving the MCH outcomes among urban poor in Chandigarh. So we can, as a community physician, we can identify an area where is it where there is a need for strengthening the maternal health component, MCH component, and there we can work in collaboration with the existing government to improve that. So in this study, we have uh, uh, created a model where there was early engagement of potential partners like directors of both the uh, PGI and Chandigarh administration. There was clearly stated purpose, no financial conflict, 
existing health infrastructure was uh, used and but there was a common goal of improving mch and there was effective communication through joint uh, quarterly and annual review meetings so we used the logic model you can read in detail in the paper wherein we had certain input indicators process indicators outputs outcomes and impact impact is mainly related to mortality indicators so some of the inputs by pj was like resident doctors which we have given and uh, a uh, faculty was there and uh, one medical social worker but there were lot of uh, process indicators and most of these process indicators were related to monitoring and supervision of the existing program like we used to conduct uh, joint weekly meetings with the ncs staff quarterly meetings with the program officers annual review meetings with the heads then assistance in daily indoor and outdoor emergency services identification of high risk pregnancies identification of the problem families data analysis and interpretation that we used to do and give it to them and tell and used to tell them that this is the focus area you need to focus on these aspects assisting in their outbreaks providing work outputs to the ncs staff so ncs staff was uh, directly under uh, our supervision and we worked very closely with them we also improved their uh, um, their skills and we after uh various rounds of uh, training sessions with them so uh, like for example support is supervision of healthcare in home based postnatal care immunization session and cold chain monitoring records hmis rch portal and debriefing meeting followed by debriefing meeting so we followed a cascade model of uh, uh, like solving the problems where in uh, first of all the health workers they identified a problem family for example they would not like to come for antenatal checkup in in the center and uh, so first level counseling was done by the anm then our social worker then the resident doctors and finally by by me the faculty and we used to link them with the health system and refer facility and also we were uh, involved in preparing the birth preparedness plan of pregnant women also uh, the female uh, medical social worker was involved on family planning of the uh, family planning services especially counseling of the husbands so that played a very crucial role in opting for various family planning methods these are some of the joint meetings where in the smo and the pj faculty they, they were monitoring the anms and uh, uh, various sessions were held on different topics uh, reproductive health maternal health rm and cha topics for improving the skills knowledge of the anms and also we did a very interesting thing that uh, by use of micro teaching to improve the skill of home based postnatal checkups uh, this has also been published so these are some of the uh, glimpses of annual review meeting with the director health services and head department and quarterly review meeting with the rcho officers so and also we jointly conducted various health education through uh, to enhance the community, uh, knowledge of the community to enhance community engagement on various uh, uh, days related to maternal and child health so uh, we we actually worked in one of the area which was a civil hospital the csc urban csc sector 45 and compare it with another area which was uh, near by dispensary area control area and we found that uh, Uh, after the intervention there was a remarkable improvement in the indicators of maternal health as compared to this control area as a result the chandigarh administration told us to work in this area also and after that and main intervention i would say that it was our intervention was supportive supervision monitoring and supportive supervision which has improved the indicator in the control area as well so uh, we can play a very important role in the way the programs can be implemented we can we can do it and we can demonstrate it we can work with them we can uh, monitor them we can uh, provide supportive supervision we can generate evidence so uh, and uh, but we need to know what is there in the existing program uh, it it happens most of the time that uh, uh, the medical colleges they work in isolation so that should not be the case especially with our specialty we have to work with the government to understand uh, what is uh, uh, their uh, objective how they are implementing and we have to uh, ho um, hold their hands in implementing the program in the in the community level 
So that was all in this session. And I would like to thank my senior resident, Dr. Stuti, for assisting me in preparing this uh, talk. So thank you so much. I'm happy to take any questions if you have. Thank you so much, madam. Uh, I think we are privileged to have had the opportunity to learn from you today. And I'm sure that your guidance will help our PG students navigate the academic and ground level challenges and will instill in, a, in them confidence as they carry with them into the future for striving excellence in all the endeavors that they do. And I'm sure that uh, this is such a topic that to have been learn for learn it first and then accordingly they will be able to produce more questions whenever we yeah. get the questions we will definitely reach out to you madam thank you so much madam coming to the thank end you. of this okay. coming to the end of this discussion madam i would like to take a moment to thank our pg coordinating team and all the office bearers for supporting us in this pg lecture series Please do subscribe to the IPSM eConnect channel to stay tuned to our further events. As the moderator of the session, this is Dr. Priya Varni signing out. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.